Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono red oil counter deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And this is almost a block constructed deck. Most cards from Phyrexia all will be one. And one of the main build around cards is Ourobrask's Forge, a 3 mana rare artifact, saying at the beginning of combat on your turn, put an oil counter on it and then create an X1 red Phyrexian horror creature token with Trample and Haste, where X is the number of oil counters on the forge and then sacrifice that token at the beginning of the next end step. So it will keep getting bigger and bigger over time, and this will eventually end up killing the opponent as one of our primary win conditions. And then another win condition is the Filigree Silex, which at first glance seems more like a removal spell, as we can add more oil counters when we tap it, and then we can tap and sacrifice Silex to destroy each non-land permanent with mana value equal to the number of oil counters on the Silex, but the secret mode is the very last ability, tap and remove 10 oil counters from among permanents we control and sacrifice Silex to deal 10 damage to any target. And if we combine that with our two copies of Solfim and Mayhem Dominus, we can potentially kill the opponent on the spot dealing 20 damage, because Solfim is a 5-4, saying if a source we control would deal a non-combat damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals double that damage to that player or permanent instead. So now all of a sudden Silex will deal 20 damage damage, which can also come up, and then we can also potentially make Solfim indestructible if we discard two cards and pay the additional cost, which can also be useful in certain matchups. And then we also have two copies of the new Koth Fire of Resistance as a way to find additional mountains with a plus two ability, the minus three giving us removal for larger creatures as we deal damage equal to the number of mountains we control, which is why we have all these basic mountains, not even playing the channel land in this build. Another very useful land in our mana base is the Monumental Facade, a land that enters with two oil counters on it, makes colorless mana, and we can tap and remove an oil counter from the facade to move it to an artifact or a creature we control. So that can also be very useful in adding additional counters to the forge, so we immediately start growing the horror tokens. Can also add an extra counter to the Silex to maybe blow up larger permanents a turn ahead of schedule, which the opponent may not be expecting. And then we also have four copies of the Tablet of Completion, which is another artifact that can tap to put an oil counter on itself, another great way to get to the 10 counters for the last ability on Silex. And then we can tap it to make colorless mana, but only if we have two or more oil counters on the tablet. And finally, we can also pay one mana, tap it to draw a card, but only if it has five or more oil counters on it. So that's another reason why facade potentially speeding up the process for tablet can be quite useful. And then we also have four copies of the Furnace Skull Bomb, which is another way of adding oil counters to other permanents, one mana to play, and then one in a red to sacrifice and put two oil counters on target artifact or creature we control and still draw a card, otherwise one mana to simply sacrifice and draw. And then the Churning Reservoir is our final way of adding additional oil counters onto other permanents. At the beginning of our upkeep, we can put one on either an artifact or a creature we control. can also pay two mana tap it to create a 1-1 token, but only if an oil counter was removed from a permanent we control, which can be often the case with our Monumental Facade, or if a permanent with an oil counter on it was put into a graveyard this turn, which is less likely to happen, but could maybe come up if we sacrifice our Vindictive Flamestoker, which is the only other creature in the deck with Besides Solfum, a 1-2 saying whenever we cast a non-creature spell, put an oil counter on it, which can quickly add up, as you can see with all these cheap non-creature spells. And then we can pay 6 and a red Sacrifice Flamestoker to discard our hand and draw 4 cards, but the ability gets a 1 mana discount for each oil counter on the Flamestoker, so we can often activate this for around 3 or 4 mana, and then still get to discard our hand, which hopefully is empty, and then draw 4 to refuel. And then we also have four copies of Play With Fire as one of the few cards outside of Phyrexia. All will be one to deal two damage at instant speed. Can also maybe be doubled by Solfim to just go upstairs and burn the opponent out. And then a four copies of Brotherhood's End as our sweeper of choice. Since we are kind of a controlling deck, need to make sure we don't get overrun by opposing creatures. And between our cheap spot removal, our Silex and our Brotherhood's End, we should be able to keep early creatures in check. And this can deal three damage to each creature and each Planeswalker. Sometimes it can also come up that we have a Flames Stoker in play, but by casting our Brotherhood's End, we still get an extra oil counter on the Flame Stoker, and then if we hold full control, we'll often have enough mana to still sacrifice Flame Stoker and draw four cards, 
before Brotherhood Sand deals 3 damage to it, so that's also an important interaction to keep in mind. And then a mana base, as we mentioned, just 20 basic mountains and 4 copies of Facade, which as you can see has a ton of great synergy throughout the deck. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Don't love the look of this hand, double Brotherhood Sand can have its moments in certain matchups, but uh, we wouldn't be playing out a Flamestoker first since it dies to it. So then we're just doing nothing, hoping to cast Brotherhood's End, and then maybe Flamestoker gets going. Let's take a mulligan. This is a bit better. Not great, but uh, we'll try it, and then attempt it to bottom a land. Skull Bomb into Silex. Couple spot removal spells. Facing blue-white soldiers, it seems. Well, double Brotherhood Sand actually would have been a pretty solid keep in this matchup. But we still have some cheap removal, at least. Opponent probably flashing in the two one ones. So if I play Silex, we can get that going. Or I can play a Tablet to eventually draw cards with as well. Maybe using the Skull Bomb to put counters on it. And I'll just uh, use this now. Yeah, there's the reinforcements. Take two. And this might be another reinforcements incoming. So for now, could play Silex and then wait on sacking Skull Bomb until we actually get the two oil counters from it. And I could also decide to sack Silex to just deal with two 1-1 one, one tokens. Since they have mana value 0. Sadly, the reinforcements itself has mana value 2. And it's going to be a Zephyr Sentinel instead. Are they going to try and pick up a reinforcements? Yeah, I think I would rather just kill the Sentinel at this point. And then we're not going to be under too much pressure. Let them pick it up first. And take it out in case they have any counter spells. Since if our opponent's playing with all these flash creatures, it wouldn't surprise me if they had some more counter spells in their deck. So for now, only take one. And we'll start taking up the Silex, I think. Reservoir's not bad. So I can play Reservoir. And then Sack Skull Bomb on Tablet. And then next turn we'll be able to draw with it. Finding a Facade. Okay. So Facade would have been able to enable Tablet right now. Although we wouldn't have had the mana to activate it, so that's fine. And there's the reinforcements again. Now we're not going to want to blow up Silex on two counters, but maybe go up to three, where some of the soldier payoffs are as well. Veteran's a good one, so before they get a counter, we're going to want to take it out. Take three, still manageable. Hopefully find a Brotherhood's End at some point. And then counter on Silex since Tablet has five already. Okay, so start by drawing. Solfim's not bad. Play Sulfum and pass, and then keep Silex on three for the time being. Although we're actually pretty close to just killing the opponent here. Let's see. Eight, nine, ten. No, actually we just kill the opponent right now. Remove ten counters. That's twenty damage with Sulfum out. Okay, well that was unexpected, but I'll take it. Wow, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And seems reasonable. Turn one Flamestoker. Turn two maybe Silex before setting up Reservoir. And hope to draw some cards with it. 
Opponent's got the sleeper. Possible they also had a cut down available. So sleeper, we don't have to play with fire just yet. So could go reservoir, keep up, play with fire. So I can kill sleeper before it grows up to a 3-3. Since I might want to tap out for forge on turn 3. So that's one potential play. Sure. And then I could not attack with Flame Stoker, kind of forcing them to either kill it or pump Sleeper, at which point we can respond with a play with fire, which would waste the opponent's turn. So I think it paid off here. They might still have a cut down, but at least uh, they weren't able to add anything to the board. And then now we get our forge going. And then what's the priority between Tablet and Silex? They both add a counter to themselves every turn. Fasan probably keeps adding counters to the forge. So I guess uh, Silex probably the priority. In case we need to answer a shield root if that uh, shows up, since that will kill us very quickly. Could also make a 1-1 one -one with a reservoir, so we have additional blockers available. But I think Silex is still probably a little safer. Bonad levels up Sleeper. Not going to want to use Silex on one, since then we lose our Reservoir as well. So we'll take two. And there's Shieldred. Okay. So need to get this to four counters as soon as possible. Which we can do so pretty quickly, luckily. Koth. Almost an answer to Shieldred. Not quite. So, and what's our move? Play Koth, get a mountain, or we can kill Evolved Sleeper, which is maybe safer. And then Point's gonna take out Koth, and then next turn Silex deals with Shieldred. And then our token deals 5, opponent can block it. If we had a 4-4 token and they blocked with Shieldred, we would have been able to finish it off at least. Okay, pass it back. Bankbuster's fine. We'll gain two with Shieldred. But the Forge is relentless and it's gonna end the game very quickly here. Opponent ignoring Koth means we get an extra mountain on the way out. Although we might actually be able to just kill the opponent with a Silex now, since we have plenty of counters. Yeah, I guess add another counter to the Forge now. And Skull Bomb will make that even easier. So, can go through the motions here. Play a Skull Bomb, sacrifice it on the Forge. Tablet can put a counter on itself. Attack with a 9 power token, and then Silex is 10 more. And we can remove them from whichever permanence we'd like. There we go. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems decent. Flame Stoker with a few cheap non-creature spells. Facing blue-white could be Control. Which uh, can be a tough matchup for sure. Especially if they have answers to artifacts. But nope, looks like soldiers. Could play Tablet, or could play another Flame Stoker, and then play with Fire. And then next turn, Tablet, maybe putting a counter on it with Facade. Sure. 
could kill Harbin now to attack for one. There are scarier creatures the opponent could play next turn, like Siege Veteran. So I'll hang on to play with fire just in case. Brutal Cathar also something we wouldn't mind taking out. So I'll take three first. Which makes it less likely to be Siege Veteran. Could still be Brutal Cathar, which they didn't really have a reason to play main phase. Yeah, sure, let's play with Fire Harbin. Opponent's got the Sentinel to save him. Fair enough, wasn't playing around it. And then now, do we want to get the Silex going or Tablet? Silex, we want to get to two counters, presumably. Although next turn I could play Silex and then use double facade to immediately activate it without the opponents being able to play around it. Although then we would also lose the tablet as a problem. Okay, so maybe play Silex and then I don't have to put a counter on it with the uh, facade. But maybe it's okay. And then maybe get the Silex to three counters. If our opponent plays a powerful 3-drop here. So we'll take 3. And opponent runs out Harbin anyway. Okay. Possible they have another Sentinel in hand. To save the 2-drops. Brotherhood's Ends will eventually be quite powerful too. So... Yeah, activate Silex seems step one. And then see what the response is. Okay, that worked. So opponent might have the two one ones at instant speed, the reinforcements. In which case, do we want to trade a flame stoker for a one one? Not really. So just play tablets. And then add more counters to the flame stokers. This will get an oil counter, and then a question is whether to use facade. And uh, yeah, don't mind using facade on one of the flame stokers. And then the other one maybe on the tablets to eventually draw cards with it. And then we'll just pass. Main concern now is a Brutal Cathar exiling the Flame Stoker that has more counters on it. Since we really want to be able to draw cards first, maybe in response to Brotherhood Sands, I guess that makes it sort of awkward with our Sweeper here, since one of the Flame Stokers is going to die to it. Okay, opponent's definitely committing now. So Brotherhood Sands looking good. And a Furnace Skull Bomb. Alright, so let's say we play Skull Bomb. Then I can play a land. Cast a Brotherhood's End up to 6 counters, and then before damage, sacrifice it to draw 4. I think that leaves us in a decent spot, even though we lose other Flame Stoker. So that one can maybe attack first, for what it's worth. Maybe sneak in one damage. Okay, opponent blocked anyway. And then go full control for this to work. Opponent gets to draw a card on the way out. And we get to draw four. And then Tablet will turn into a card draw engine as well. Okay. Don't hate my spot. Forge will be our win condition now. And we've got a Brotherhood's End to keep the board clear. So let's say we play Forge. Am I planning to play Flame Stoker first is a question, and I think I'm planning to Brotherhood's End before we manage to draw with the Flame Stoker. Although, maybe we actually have enough oil counters going around where that's not the case. 
Although this turn it seems efficient to go forge, put oil counters on it with both Skull Bomb and Facade. So we'll start there. And another Silex, okay. Tablet's gonna tick up. And we'll get a 4 power token right away. So the main concern now would be like a Shield of Argive showing up, since Brotherhood and doesn't answer it. Okay, another Sentinel. So Brotherhood and is looking good. Siege Veteran will leave behind some tokens, but that's good enough for me. And another Forge. Okay. So Brotherhood and wipe the board. And then I can play Flamestoker into another Forge. Could also use Silex to blow up all tokens, which is possibly even safer, but should still be good enough next turn. Hit for six. And then Tablet will go to five counters, allowing us to draw next turn. Okay. We're in the driver's seat here. Valiant Veteran pumps the tokens. Take four down to seven. And then start by drawing, or are we planning on using Flamestoker, perhaps? So I can play Silex to deal with the tokens. And then, yeah, I would be able to sacrifice Flamestoker here, maybe after chum blocking. So no need to draw with tablets. Opponent does have to block here to survive. Another Sentinel. How does that change the math? Don't think it really does. Opponent keeps it in play. So, are they planning to chump with Veteran or with Sentinel? If they chump with Veteran next turn, they could exile it, adding counters to the team. But since we deal with the tokens using our Silex, we're nowhere close to taking lethal. Now, I could try and dig for a play with fire by using Tablet for mana, and then having a leftover mana after sacking Flamestoker, but that seems unnecessarily risky here. When we can just chump, sacrifice, and then I guess we could still find one in the opponent's turn to fire off if I tap Tablet for mana. Another Siege Veteran, that's fine. Counter on Valiant Veteran, so we'll jump, sacrifice, activate. Make sure to add mana. Sacrifice Flamestoker. No play with fire, but we can sacrifice Silex to deal with the tokens. And then Triple Forge can cross the finish line. Could draw with Tablet as well here to see what's next, but let's just end the game. Alright, sweet. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems pretty solid. Got a Reservoir to add counters to Silex, double ends to clean things up, so we can maybe get to 10 counters for the Silex if needed. And then we would love to find our Forge as well, as a win condition. Facing turn 1 Swamp. 
And I guess I should wait on activating Silex on the off chance that uh, I don't want more counters on it since Reservoir is not a May ability. So we'll definitely get a counter on Silex. Yeah, that's fine. I've got Brotherhood's End to deal with the Knight. Do we want to cast it right now? I think we wait. And then I don't want to play Flamestoker into our Sweeper. Facade also doesn't seem necessary to use right now. So we can hang on. Okay, Yogmoth means our opponent does get to draw if we don't want to blow up Silex, which I think I'm okay with. Just gonna add another oil counter. Koth isn't bad either, but uh, let's wipe the board and play Flamestoker. And then now Reservoir can put its counters on the Flamestoker instead. Shield Roads we probably have to answer with Silex now. Since Koth only deals 3 damage. And then get his uh, Koth going. Question is whether we want to use Facade on the Flamestoker already. Opponent could easily remove it here. So maybe hang on to my counter for the time being. And if Flamestoker survives next turn, we'll consider it. And now we can at least answer a shield route with Koth. Hope to dodge and invoke Despair. Flash Gorger is fine. And Sleeper. So count from Flamestoker. And then we'll have to do some math. So let's say I cast a Brotherhood's End up to four counters. And then in response, we would be able to activate this for three. Yeah, that seems pretty solid. So I have to go into full control for this to work. Get a counter. And then sacrifice it. And then we can still plus Koth after discarding our hand. Not the most exciting draws, but at least the board is clear. And our opponent explodes. All right, I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Lots of cheap interaction, and then Forge to carry us to victory, hopefully. And let's see what we're up against. Blue-white soldiers, okay. Frontliner, not the biggest threat. So I'm not going to play with fire it just yet. Play Silex. And then definitely get it up to one counter. Probably park it at three counters total. Okay, veteran, we can play with fire. So I could still play a forge. Or I can control the board a bit more with uh, play with fire here. Hope we can fire off the second one to have a more mana efficient turn. I think getting the Forge going is reasonable, because we have Silex, even if our opponent plays a second Lord, it's no big deal. Okay, Siege Veteran, we're gonna wanna try and take out before the opponent gets too many tokens from it. So we're taking six. So I guess what we could do is just use Silex, killing veteran, play with fire, kill siege veteran. Or we could uh, play Koth, killing siege veteran, and then Silex deals with valiant veteran. And our opponent will be able to finish off Koth. 
but then we still have double play with Fire in Hand. It's definitely the more mana efficient turn, although we may not be able to spend our mana next turn, in which case kill Valiant Veteran, play with Fire Siege Veteran could work out a little bit better. Nah, I think I still go for Koth on Siege. I don't think I'll be able to keep Koth around for long, no matter how we do this. And then no need to blow up Silex just yet, in case their opponent plays another 2-drop main phase. But before damage, most likely. Okay, Koth down, but our forge is slowly taking up. Danik, yeah, another 2-drop, and an officer. Okay, would love to find our board wipe here. Solve him, not bad either. So what happens if our opponent exiles a Valiant Veteran next turn, puts counters on the team, how much trouble are we in? Could be better off killing some of their creatures now. Although Solfem does block profitably, and then I'll still have a play with fire available. Can uh, remove a Brutal Cathar before they get a chance to exile Solfem, or I guess afterwards is maybe even better, so we can set up an ambush. Opponent found room for Mishra's Foundry, and there's Brutal Cathar. So yeah, we'll let that happen, we'll let the opponent attack, and then play with fire, Brutal Cathar, get Solfen back. So block Denik, take six. And then we'll still have a play with fire left over to deal 4 damage now. Okay, facade puts counter on forge. So that will deal 5 damage. And then we have to play defense, I think. Can deal 14 total, which is a little bit short. Would have had enough if our opponent didn't gain 3 life last turn. So we'll hit them for 5, and then got to play defense with Solfim, but between a blocker and a removal spell, we should be able to survive, even with a Mishra's Foundry potentially turning into a 2-2 creature. Alright, opponent exiles Veteran to put counters on the team, and uh, sure, we can play with Fire, a frontliner here. Probably should have waited actually, since play with Fire deals 4 damage, so... Would have still killed a 3-3. Since now our opponent might keep the officers back on defense instead of attacking and potentially dying on the way back. Because next turn Forge goes up to 7 counters thanks to our facade, which is 12 damage exactly. So we actually wanted them to attack here. Opponent attacks anyway. Okay, maybe they didn't do the math. Fall to 3, untap, doesn't matter what we draw. Just activate facade on Forge, get a counter and attack. And the Reservoir also would have been able to make an extra 1-1 token here. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and is keepable, I think. Start with a Flame Stoker, next turn already put two oil counters on it with our 1-drops, and then we're well on our way to drawing some extra cards. Let's see what he points up to. Turn 1 Swamp. Is there a cut down? Looks like it. Alright, let's attack first. Maybe get one damage in. Without Flamestoker, our hand's quite a bit less exciting. As we don't have that way to refuel. And there's a cut down. So now we're hoping to draw a Forge to start making tokens. Maybe Silex could be our win condition alongside Solfem. As our opponent plays an underdog. Okay, back up. Flamestoker's nice. 
probably just play Flamestoker, and then I could wait on using Skull Bomb until maybe next turn, so if I draw an extra land, I can also use Reservoir to make an extra 1-1 one -one token. Or we could hold the Flamestoker and try and set up a Brotherhood's End to wipe the board, and then commit the Flamestoker later, which I could also see. Just hope they play another creature that dies to it. Okay, Trespassers, perfect. So Brotherhood's End, kill both creatures. We'll buy some more time. And then Tablet's not bad alongside our Reservoir to speed up the card draw. Now if Shielder shows up, we're still in big trouble. just blitzing underdog okay so they might have invoked despair in hand at five mana or a bunch of spot removal which will take care of flame stoker and sulfur no doubt so how about we just play tablets and another reservoir and then just not play a creature that's gonna die anyway and then double reservoir can add counters to the tablets so it can uh, draw a little bit sooner All right, it's going to be Shieldred after all. Don't have an answer to it at the moment. So I can play Solfim, but it's most likely going to die next turn, and Invoke Despair would be especially painful. So what's the alternative? put encounters on tablets, which can draw, but it loses even more life to shield it. So I really need to find a Silex as soon as possible. If I find a Silex and we get to play Solfim, we could set up the one-hit KO before the opponent goes above 20, but it pretty much needs to happen this turn. And if I want to draw this turn, it's going to involve Skull Bomb. Okay. Skull Bomb on tablets. Hope to find Silex. We found a Silex. Okay. So if we play Silex, making sure we tap our mountains, then next turn take four, still dead to invoke despair, but playing Flamestoker should not really change that. So yeah, play Silex. And then are we dead on board to a blitzed underdog? I guess we are. So hopefully they just don't see the lethal move. Just play a random creature. Alright, opponent sees the underdog blitz. So yeah, now we should be dead. Possibly also had a cheap removal spell for Flame Stoker, so we wouldn't necessarily have survived there. So let's see, this triggers beginning of upkeep. Maybe there's a way to kill Shieldred here with the Silex after all. Before taking two damage. But it's not gonna leave us in a great spot. And our opponent leaving up removal means Solfim also wouldn't necessarily have done it. So, add an oil counter to the tablets. And then, before we take our draw step, we need to figure out a way to deal with Shieldred. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna be a little bit short here, I'm afraid. Three counters on Silex, not quite four, so Shielder is gonna finish us off. But yeah, otherwise, I think uh, we would have had lethal with Solfim doubling the damage from Silex. After we put an extra counter on the tablet, we would have had ten oil counters exactly. So GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems keepable. Flamestoker to start things out. Opponent on a red deck, turn one Phoenix Chick, okay. So chances of Flamestoker surviving until we draw with it are pretty slim. But we'll get a Silex going for now. And then I don't expect to be able to block with Flamestoker even if a hasty Swiss Spear shows up. They can likely enable Prowess, so I'll just hit for one. Also makes it less of a threat. Okay, Flame Breather 
Not the easiest to kill with a play with fire. So maybe Silex will have to deal with that one. Koth also not bad. So I could attack and then finish off a Flame Breather if they somehow do block. Could Skull Bomb put two counters on Silex, in which case I shouldn't have activated it to blow up Flame Breather. Could also cycle Skull Bomb to just hit my land drops for Koth. So quite a few options. Say we play Skull Bomb and then just pass. Reckless Impulse is fine. Finds Squee and Warfare, but no third land apparently. So that's promising. So add counter to Silex. So now it's the play with a Skull Bomb. Since we cannot use the second mode at instant speed. Think I still just take my draw step. Since our opponent's possibly locked into playing a 3-drop next turn if they draw land. And then just uh, cycle Skull Bomb. Putting counters on the Flame Stoker. Hoping to hit our land drop. Which we did not. In which case... Just gonna pass. And then if they play Squee, we can play with Fire. Right, it's gonna be another Impulse. Do I want to sack Silex now to kill Flame Breather before they play another spell? That seems reasonable. Okay, put found Lands and Lightning Strike. And they had to play with Fire after all. Okay, so Squeeze gonna go away, leaving them with Lightning Strike as only Exalt card next turn. So that happens. I think I hang on to play with fire. Question is whether we want to brother it then before Koth or after and maybe get to forge going in the meantime. And then now we also have the option of just plussing Koth to get more lands going. And then if it soaks up a bunch of burn spells that's fine. Mishra's Foundry, we're happy to target with a play with fire at some point. So they can probably take out Koth if they want to. Mechanized Warfare gonna be their play. And a Kumano. So that's potentially 4 damage at Koth. But Phoenix Jig just goes face. Okay, so Silex is gonna want to go up to 3 counters as soon as possible. And what to do with Koth? Killing Phoenix Jake now is a little bit better that the Warfare is in play. And then I could play Forge, play Silex and be tapped out. Play with Fire unlikely to kill a larger creature next turn, but we could maybe kill Foundry if they activate it. So tough call. Forge is our eventual win condition, so the sooner we get it going the better. Although maybe we just have to play a control game here with Silex and play with Fire for at least another turn cycle. Could also kill Kumano before they get to chapter 2. Another Warfare. Well, now the plan of Silex going to 3 seems pretty clear. And, and the festivities, yeah, that's still quite effective, dealing 3. Finishing off Koth as well. So activate Facade on Silex, just gonna blow it up now before they can play an instant speed burn spell. And then now we can play Forge, keep up double play with fire. But at 7 life, can't feel too comfortable. But at least now Brotherhood's End doesn't have any awkwardness of killing our own Planeswalker. Hope they just activate Mistress Foundry here. So we can kill both creatures. Does seem like they might have another burn spell in hand. Ooh, Solfim was nice. So 
So hit for two. And then now if we find any burn spells, they'll deal double damage. Opponents play with fire upstairs, down to five. Bottoms. So they've got a long way to go if they want to find five points of burn. Kumano is one. And tablets. Now we could make Solfim indestructible. Don't expect it to be hugely relevant in this matchup. And I shouldn't be dead to any haste creature except for Squee next turn, which would deal four exactly. So it's a tough call whether to attack with Solfim, but I think we should. And then I'll get the tablet going. And then next turn we would present lethal, so I think Squee is probably the only single top deck that kills us. A combination of uh, Reckless Impulse into Burn Spells could also get there. Alright, just a length, so I think we got there. GG's, incredibly close game here against Mono Red Burn. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems fine. Reservoir into Silex with a Sulfim in hand means we are gonna attempt to deal 20 damage. Brotherhood Sands can keep us alive in the meantime, so we'll see how that works out. Turn 1 Swamp, backup Solfem could be useful. And a turn 2 Bankbuster, happy to play a long grindy game. Could also use a Silex to blow up Bankbuster next turn already. But I think we've got other plans. So we can use a Skull Bomb to speed things up as well. Facade's nice. Have to use this now. And then Mono Black shouldn't have any answers to artifacts. So we're up to essentially five counters here after using Silex in the opponent's turn. So we're making good progress. And then we have two on the facade, so we're actually not too far away from lethal. Trespasser doesn't gain any life, which is important here, since every point of life matters when we're about to deal 20. But the bankbuster can attack. Okay. So I could already play Solfim as a distraction, could Brotherhood's end killing Trespasser. Downside of playing Solfim is that the opponent's Trespasser will be able to exile it and gain one life. Drawback of playing Brotherhood's end is if they have another Trespasser to gain life. But uh, they're more likely to have removal for Solfim than have another Trespasser, I think. So let us Brotherhood's end. Deal three. And then hope they stay at 20. And then next turn we should be able to kill them with Solfim doubling the Silex damage. Liliana is fine. When I win. Don't want them to keep up a removal spell potentially, but her opponent draws with a Bankbuster, so they're perfectly tapped out. So it doesn't matter what we discard here. Counter on Silex. Play Sulfum. And activate for 20 damage. Well, that was satisfying. Alright, so we get to see our Monoret Oil Counter deck in action, and the deck is incredibly unique, haven't really seen anything like it before, but the drawback is that we're unlikely to see many Oil Counter cards in future expansions, especially in Standard, so don't expect the deck to get a ton of upgrades in future sets, which is one of the main drawbacks, since other Standard decks are likely to get better over time, this one probably has reached its full potential already, so that's a little bit sad going forward. But yeah, the deck's pretty fun, especially if you get the Solfum plus Silent Alex combo online and Forge has been quite impressive, especially in this build compared to some of the other builds I've tried. I've tried more aggressive red green.
green versions, where you have some powerful one-drop oil counter creatures like the Evolving Adaptive, and the Fusling also has great synergy with Urbrask's Forge, and then you have Free From Flesh as a cheap pump spell to immediately add a ton of oil counters to your creatures and inflict more damage, and then you can maybe get them within range of a 10 damage Silex, as opposed to needing to deal 20 damage in one hit, and then Magmatic Sprinter fits into that deck a bit better than the more controlling build, and then Miglos, of course, a payoff for the red-green oil counters as well, that can immediately come into play with five oil counters on it. So those are all cards you can play around with if you want to transition into a more aggressive build, but if you want to take full advantage of Forge, a more controlling approach is probably the way to go. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.